Um, I would like to thank the uh, owners of this for uh, giving me the opportunity to talk. Uh, I've long been uh, attracted by uh, entropy since I was, a, I was at high school. And over the years, uh, I came up with these questions. First, uh, uh, thanks for entropy and uh, data inference of that law. Yes? Uh, uh, Perhaps I can hold like this. And this is fine. Okay, my yeah. uh, okay so one question is uh, are maximum entropy and base and inference compatible with each other? And the second is, if so, uh, which is more fundamental? And the first one can be, uh, first question can be answered. Uh, one answer is yes, um, according to Jennings. Uh, originally, maximum entropy principle was designed to set up the priors, and once we have the priors, mm -hmm. uh, change out the case to use base and inference to do subsequent inference. So, since maximum and base and inference are used in different contexts, there should be no contradiction. And another uh, answer is yes. Uh, base rule implies maximum entropy principle. Uh, but here uh, we should be very careful because it's not maximizing channel entropy, but rather minimizing the Colbert library information. So, uh, for to describe this, I use the abbreviation clip down there. Uh, and this uh, implication was proved by Van Kamp and Hal and Cover in 1981 for some moment constraints and uh, generalized by Caesar in 19. For a more general complex set of uh, uh, constraints. And again, yes, uh, both accent and base and inference are special cases of uh, minimizing Kolbach pipeline information. And this has been proved by Professor Katija and Gilhead in, in 2006. So, um, accent and based on inference are perfectly comparable. And by the way, in the past, I've seen a few papers that mentions the tension between max n and base, but in my opinion, they are all uh, so applied to different problems. So uh, <coughs> this is, uh, I think, just a confusion that it is really max n and based on inference are perfectly comparable. Now, uh, question two. Uh, which is more fundamental, max and or base? Uh, given the result of uh, Katija and Gifford 2006, since minimizing cobalt particle information implies both max and base and inference, it seems that uh, max and is more fundamental. But uh, I note that all maximizations of entropy or cobalt particle information or whatever. Uh, in some way or another, use the base rule somewhere in the maximization. Uh, for example, uh, in Shannon's uh, signal work, uh, in his third axiom, he, he uh, Shannon uh, introduces an equation like this, and here, here we see that he implicitly used base rule. This is the conditional pro probability of state state two given either state two or three properties. So he is using base rule. Excuse me, by base rule you mean the product rule on this generalization? Exactly, yes. I mean product okay. rule. Yeah. I, I would not use those words, but that's all right. But, yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, so product rule. Uh, and uh, in a famous axiomatization by Shaw and Johnson nineteen eighty. Uh, they use uh, independence axioms, and independence is, by the way, a special case of the product rule. And same for Kitchen given 2006. So, um, well, one view is that base 
is more fundamental than uh, Maxent because uh, the product and the rules of probability are well axiomatized by uh, Cox and James in a very coupling way. Uh, and once we have these, then minimizing callback library information, we, we get this by but however, this is only asymptotically. I, I mean, large sum. Another view is that uh, clip is more fundamental because it can be applied in situations not just uh, moment constraints or not just when we are giving data, but uh, containing everything. Uh, and also, uh, if we use only uh, Base and the result of uncompleted hard and cover, we naturally get the uh, 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 you know when we minimize cover by by information, we get the Lagrange multiplier. The Mosier distribution is like exponential of Lagrange multiplier times the constraint. But this Lagrange multiplier cannot be interpreted mm -hmm. using only base. But if we Callback library information, then this Lagrange multiplier can be interpreted as a shadow price, so it has a very nice interpretation. So, one view is uh, well, another view is that uh, clip is more fundamental. Uh, and I myself, I myself, I'm still ambivalent between these two views. Uh, but um, in this talk, I would like to axiomatize. Uh, minimum callback library information principle uh, without using the product rule uh, because I think using product rule is uh, a topology. But of course you can disagree. Uh, so this is very basic, just a quick reminder. Of course, Shannon need, the Shannon entropy is this. And the callback library information is uh, on this. Uh, and uh, well, I, I guess many uh, most audience knows about this, but the uh, axiomatization of uh, inductive reasoning by James uh, consists of a few <coughs> axioms. Uh, the plausibility of propositions are represented, represented by real numbers. Uh, quantitative correspondence with common sense, which comes to the next slide and consistency in the sense that if you can reason out in two different ways, it should lead to the same conclusion. Uh, so I will propose similar axioms to these, but different. Uh, if this is located okay, corresponding to this common sense, but I guess we can skip this. OK, uh, the axioms. First, um, I would like to accentize a quantity called information gain uh, of a proposition. Uh, so it's a function i of two arguments, the prior and posterior. And here, uh, prior means the prior of a proposition, so it's a free number. So this is the first axiom. Uh, information gain is a function of two arguments, two positive rate numbers. And the second axiom is that uh, the information gain should be a continuous function. It makes no harm in assuming continuity. And also, uh, it should be a monotonic function of the posterior. Uh, this is natural because if, if the uh, proposition is more likely after updating, then uh, it's natural to assume that we are getting more information than before updating. So that's why I use the this. And third axiom is path independence, uh, which means if there are two ways to update your, your belief or possibility of a proposition, then uh, the total information gain should be uh, independent of the way you update. So if you update from P to Q via R, or P to Q via R prime, 
then the total information gained from the first part and the second part should be equal. Uh, the fourth axiom is independence from the choice of unit. That is, if the maximum plausibility is 1 or 100, uh, it shouldn't matter. This is just a, a unit, so uh, which mathematically means that the, the function i is uh, homogeneous of degree 1 if we multiply by uh, p and q by uh, Factor T, then the total information here should be the same. Yes. Can I just ask about the context here, what we're talking about? Are P's and Q's probability distributions to be normalized? Uh, yeah. Because if so, I don't see how TP and TQ could be. Uh, here, P is not probability, it's just real number. Okay, after. Yeah. So not after. So not not, not, not one, yeah. Uh, the last. Uh, axiom is uh, very natural again. Uh, if you don't update, then it means you don't get any information. So I of P and P is zero. <coughs> All right. So from these axioms, I can show that uh, the information gain has to take the form uh, constant times log of posterior divided by prime. And the constant k is relevant, so I just set k equal to 1, as long as it's positive, it doesn't matter. Uh, this result, uh, information gain is equal to log of posterior divided by prior, is defined in the book of uh, Stanford Bowman Information Theory in 1953. Uh, it's just defined in this way, but uh, as you can see, it's possible to axiomatize it. Once we have the function of information gain, we can compute the uh, exposed average information gain uh, by waiting with the posterior. And this is exactly the callback line function. So just one question. Yes. Why do you use the callback line when then? Why is the callback line? I would write it PI or PI on Q. Just notation. It's just notation. P is prior, Q is posterior. P is prime. Is prior, yes. So some, sometimes people say, uh, uh, right, P, P, Q, it's just not this. For me, P is like prior, so, well, of course, for serious stuff, so also from P. I the So, uh, once we have the uh, measure of uh, inf average information gain, we can use it to uh, update the beliefs. So the axioms to update is, uh, uh, here comes uh, uh, first axiom, degrees of plausibility are uh, represented by probabilities. But here, the important point is that by probability, I don't mean to use the product rule. It's just a finitely additive measure. So I, I can add, but I don't say if two propositions are independent, I can multiply them. I, I don't say that. That's a theorem, it's, it's not an assumption. Uh, the decision maker to update his or her belief uh, should take all relevant information into account as James proposed. And uh, I assume Aristotelian logic, which means that if the decision maker knows uh, some information, uh, some information, then after after the update, he has to assign zero pl plausibility that contradicts to his knowledge, which is quite natural. And uh, the fourth axiom is the most important. Maximum concept is uh, given the prior prob plausibilities, uh, the decision maker updates the plausibilities by minimizing the average information. So. Uh, he sticks to his prior as much as possible. That, that is uh, what maximum conservatism, conservatism means. And if we assume these axioms, we can prove this theorem. The decision maker always updates his beliefs by minimizing cobalt-like information. This is 
uh, immediate from the axioms. But interestingly, we get more. Uh, it also implies that uh, all of the axioms of giants, in particular, you get uh, the base row or product group. And we also get maximum like estimation. And this method of update is consistent. And here consistent means if I if there are two ways to reach, to get to the conclusion, then the co conclusion should coincide. This this is consistency. And the proof of that from uh, lead to uh, product rule. Uh, suppose that there are uh, mutually exclusive and exhaustive propositions A I and there is some information B and uh, initially the decision makers have some information I then the priors has to be well, well defined so P of A I and A J given I A I and B given I A I and B complement given I etc are all well defined now to update, we minimize the callback lifetime information. Subject to, uh, if we know B, we must assign zero plausibility to all propositions that is containing the complement of B. So we minimize this uh, callback lifetime information subject to this constraint, these constraints, and this is what we apply. And also, the pulse voltage must add up to 1, so we have this constraint as well. And uh, you can use the uh, Lagrange multiplier technique to solve, solve for this. And the result will be that for, for series of A, I, and B, C, these are all zero by construction. And for, for series for A, I, and B, like these quantities, it turns out that, that these are proportional to the prior. So uh, the posterior of A, I, given B, and initial information I, we can split these two for the part that is containing B and the part that is not containing B. And this is the, uh, by assumption, you know, uh, the possibilities are additive. So we can split these and this guy is zero. So we are uh, left with this guy. And this one is, as I mentioned, by using Lagrange multiplier, uh, it's proportional to P. So uh, we have in the numerator we have this and to normalize we need to uh, divide by the sum in the denominator. But using again the uh, additive rule, this one is simply the possibility of B given I. So we get this. Oops. We get this. And this is exactly the product rule or base rule or whatever you call it. So, uh, Cleveland implies base. And for maximum likelihood, suppose that we have data xn, uh, which lies in some space. And uh, this, this data comes from a true density f, which is unknown to the statistician. And there is a model f, x, and theta, where theta is a parameter to be estimated. Then, uh, let's compute the covert platform information h of uh, the true density given the model, well, of course, the frequentist a prior and posterior is meaningless, but it's natural to interpret that uh, the model is the prior and the uh, truth is the posterior. So I compute the covert like information of the truth relative to the model. And uh, this is equal to this uh, and equal to this. Expectation. And now if we use the law of large numbers, then this term is the same as this, but this term can be arbitrarily approximated by uh, 
the sample average. Therefore, if we want to minimize the cool back pipeline information, since there is a minus sign here, we should maximize this. But this is precisely the uh, log likelihood function. Therefore, uh, clip implies maximum likelihood. Well, at least in large sample. <coughs> so the conclusion is that uh, both uh, <coughs> minimum pullback pipeline information principle, uh, as I did in this uh, talk, uh, can be uh, Axiomatized by axioms of inductive reasoning, as uh, James did in the uh, uh, theory of probability. Uh, and, but the question is, uh, uh, the question is, can we re replace the uh, independence axiom of Cartesian given by a non-probabilistic axiom similar to uh, the one that I mentioned here? So this is uh, a further question. Uh, since I have a few minutes left, uh, just a quick remark about my research. Well, by the way, I'm from I'm Department of Economics at Yale. Uh, so I'm applying MaxN to model uh, the macroeconomy. Uh, and in, in economics, we often have some moment, con moment conditions. For example, demand must be equal to supply, uh, or we have equations such as that is called oil equation, with which uh, says what is the uh, optimal way to to invest or save between two uh, today and tomorrow. Uh, then, we, if we do it optimally, we can get an equation like this, and this is a kind of moment condition. So I use these moment con uh, conditions to get the most likely distribution of, uh, for example, uh, consumption or production or any economic part. And what is nice about the MXN approach is that the Lagrange multipliers can be interpreted as price, and in, in, in the economy there is, of course, price, so uh, there is a very nice analogy. So, uh, yeah, so that's it. Thank you very much. more like a comment. I would very much like to see the details of this derivation, but assuming that it goes through as promised, I find this very enlightening because
because the situation with COVID vital distances, uh, in fact, it was not uniquely characterized by uh, Sharon Johnson, but independently, other people, uh, uh, the name I can look at on my computer, argued that uh, among the whole class of rainy distances, uh, uh, the only one that is everywhere continuous is the COVID fiber, and that, that's what makes it useful. And I'm delighted to see that uh, you can derive this thing from continuity without any recourse to the community. I see, yes. Yes. Uh, actually, I, I don't like this axiom because you know, it's very strong adding two, two items. So, uh, yeah, it would be nice to modify the axioms and uh, make nice. I guess this is a stylistic comment as much as anything else. In among those axioms, you have uh, a plus sign. So you've got some roots built in. There's a scaling, which is pretty close to a probability of not quite. It's there. And personally, if I'm making assumptions about arithmetical type, like arithmetical behavior, I'm just as comfortable putting those directly on degrees of belief and getting to some point that was probably right at the beginning. So the way Kevin and I have been trying to go on the, the Odyssey opening connection is to try to get back to what goes behind this, the symmetries that underlie the, that sort of arithmetic in the first place. And if you're publishing this, I wish you better luck than us. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Oh, by the way, this uh, paper was rejected by IE Transactions. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 The Albanians haven't learned to dominate the world yet. I'll be off Ariel is the question. <laughs> I, I have a largely positive uh, uh, comment on, on the whole endeavor. It's always good to try to see different maximizations, different approaches to this problem because after all, we're all involved in inductive inference and this is never guaranteed to work. So it is, it is very nice to see independent ways of approaching the subject that seem to give the same answer. Um, that's a good part. I like, I like this uh, new maximization. I, I don't see any, any, any real problems with it. Um, I do think that we differ a fair amount in the, in the language that we use. And so, for example, when you say you do not use a rule, and, and that's why I mentioned, and wait a minute, that's a product rule, it's not quite base, which is not a rule, which is very connected to a product rule, but there is some way. Um, so I don't think that this contradicts in any way, but that when I <laughs> to add that um, Ariel taught me that it's best to axiomatize using the Marxist principle. That is to say, these are my principles. If you don't like them, I have others. <laughs> <laughs> if you go further, if you see that you have the rational agent thing, yeah, uh, here, uh, axiom for maximum conservative. Uh, given prior plausibilities and update by minimizing the average gain of the posterior plausibilities. If you have measured data, you can never exclude any of the prior probabilities because it's only a finite amount of information. So this exam would imply that you never update your prior. Am I wrong? If I don't update my prior, I have the minimum in, uh, information gain. And if I have finite information, I can never put up some of the prior plausibilities. So this, in my opinion, would imply you have your prior, and if you have only real measurements, you ever stick to your prior. The second one says you are supposed to take into account all variables. Yeah, but number four says you minimize the information came as axiom. So, so of course, 
So we have to you introduce have to some other. So axiom number two is more important than axiom number four. Oh, there is the he should have added the subject to number two. Uh, on yeah. four, minimize subject to the information that is relevant. Subject to known information. This is, uh, well, here I use relevant evidence. Here, no information, but these are the same. Well, known information in the new information. Yeah, the new information, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's one more question, and then, uh, sorry. Uh, could you go back to the axioms? Uh, um, yeah, um, there is an axiomatic derivation of pullback Liger by, I think, Hobson, where yes. he also derives it. But it's, it's obviously different from yours because he based it on, on uh, Shannon's uh, yes. derivation, and he uses the product rule. Yes. Uh, how do you get away with not using that? Is it the number four that you're using this, uh, this uh, homogeneity? Or oh, okay. uh, where's the number three? Actually, it's uh, both. Uh, yes, uh, if I don't impose four, then the i function will not be log but it will be like uh, f of q minus f of p. f is some function. And if I further impose that it's homogeneous of degree one, then it has to be log. So it comes from homogeneity of degree one, the product. Yeah, well, this is getting way over my head. Uh, perhaps we can um, continue the the discussion during the coffee break and by a miracle that I don't fully understand except perhaps my uh, draconian time management techniques we're almost on time uh, so we'll meet again at 11 and uh, thank the speakers <laughs>